Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Today we are starting the life of a Crusader campaign. If you have no idea what this series is, because I've been hyping it up for quite a while, basically we are going to be using the Freelancer mod which allows you to join up into any of the AI Lord or Ladies armies and you start off at the bottom of the barrel as the levy troops and as you get more kills in battles you slowly gradually get more renowned and honor and you work your way up in that army, in the AI's army, to the tier 2s, the tier 3s, you can choose your path, whether it's archers, cavalry, infantry, and eventually when you do hit the higher tiers, you can go ahead and become a bodyguard for your lord, you get command of a set amount of soldiers in that army, it's an absolutely amazing mod, so I definitely recommend you guys go check out this one, and it's just a, a must use for any campaign, as it makes the early game so much fun. But you guys may be asking, Jackie, how the hell can you do life of a crusader there's no crusader factions in bannerlord well thanks to the absolutely amazing ramsey who works on the trial of the seven mod and also the star wars mod alongside that he's also doing a secret project that i'll mention in a second uh he has gone ahead and helped us to create our very own custom crusader state in cal radio expanded it's absolutely amazing not only does it have custom lords it has custom armors and also a completely custom unit tree that i went ahead and designed and he implemented into the game so we're going to have our very own crusader faction with hospitella knights you know amazing heavily armored medieval units roaming around the battlefield and hopefully with the freelancer we can eventually become one of those units so ramsey did ask me to mention and it's only fair after all the work he put into this mod to say that he is currently working on a very cool secret banner or project if you are, do have 3d modeling 2d uh, artist skills or coding skills uh, i highly recommend you go and hit him up he is very dedicated and he can definitely use with some help on his new mod. So definitely go ahead and hit him up. I'll leave a link to his uh, Discord uh, at down below in the description. As well as that, if you guys are looking to play with all the mods that I am using currently, I'll go ahead and leave a link to my Discord down below in the description. You can find every single mod down there. I made an install guide along with my load order and everything there. So it should make it really easy and simple to go ahead and just get the version of the game that I am playing. As I know, a lot of people want to do that with Life of a Legionary. So I put a bit more time and effort into it and hopefully you guys appreciate it. So as you can see, we have our very own Crusader culture. Uh, right now we get a nice little bonus or a little bit, I guess, less of a trade penalty. We, you know, we're out in the desert. We're trading all these, uh, you know, all these spices and all these other exotic goods uh, back into the West and uh, making a lot of money. As well as that, we do get a nice little construction bonus speed. Nothing too crazy, um, but still nice nonetheless. So how the hell do I want to create my character? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a, a soldier off camera so you guys don't have to watch me you know editing the size of his hips and his butt for about 20 minutes because I mean he's going to be thick that is for sure but I, I'm sure you guys don't want to see me edit it. Okay guys, so we now have our character and I'll give anyone bonus brownie points to guess what type of character I am trying to make. I normally like to go ahead and name these characters after something famous from literature or movies. So, you know, if you can guess what who this character is supposed to be, the face looks nothing like them. But, you know, there's some facial hair on there. The hair's kind of similar. Um, so if you can guess this before I type in the name at the end, I'll give you extra bonus points. So comment down below as soon as you get it. You might not get it from the character, but you might be able to get it from his uh, background. So as you guys will see, uh, there is a little bit of an issue when we're loading in. There's you know invisible armor on the, the lady and the lord. However, just ignore this. There's no issues when you actually get into game. I'm not sure why it is like this. So now we have to pick our background. There are a few we can definitely pick from. It will give us some decent bonuses, whether it's, you know, whether it's an oasis farm to give us athletics, which is actually really, really important whether it's, you know, trading or, you know, being a back alley thug. Well, my father was indeed, I mean, I didn't really know my father too much. I am just a simple, simple person. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab up just the, uh, the simple uh, Hattori, which is like nobleman. We're going to grab this up because, you know, my father was that little did I know about it, though. Then when I was younger, what did I really get into? Your attention to detail is always a must in the early game because athletics is so important. You know, we are just going to be a simple foot soldier and we need to be fast. Uh, if we want to get some kills and level up through the ranks. However, you know, there are plenty of other skills that could be really, really important to us. Our brawn, getting that skill early on is very important. And also leadership is just huge for the late game. But we're going to grab attention to detail. Guessing an athletics point is very, very important. 
In my adolescence, what did I get into? Well, I always had an interest with the village smithy. And that's a big clue right there. I'm sure a lot of you guys are commenting down below now, knowing exactly what I, I could do. We also have repair projects as well. I think, honestly, village smithy is probably better because it does start to give us two-handed skill, uh, which is very good. So that is exactly what we're going to grab up right now. Then in my youth, what did I do in my youth? Well, there's a few kind of things we can pick from. And I think what we're going to go ahead and do is probably probably grab up the v1 with uh yeah one right here because it does give us an extra bowman skill which is going to be kind of nice throughout the campaign um so that's what we're going to do we're going to grab up our you know, ability and it also gives us more endurance as well which i definitely can't complain about because endurance is going to be a pretty important stat for us not only for the athletics but it'll give us blacksmithing and also riding which is always good and then in my adulthood what did i finally do uh, you invested some money in some land. That could be a good idea. Maybe open up my own blacksmith shop. Couldn't be a bad idea. And that's exactly what we're going to grab. Also, having a little bit of trade in the early game is also not bad. And then we get to finally decide our age. I'm actually not sure how old my character is. I assume he's in his 20s. Um, however, the as you can see, the character does look a little bit weird in his 20s. So I always just like to grab 30s because it makes the character look a little bit more regal and just a little bit better. I feel like, I feel like 20s is just like a little bit weird. It makes him look very much like a child. So we're going to grab 30s and we get some extra points as well which i'll probably be sticking into athletics and maybe into leadership just to start get that going as early as possible and then we need a character name if you haven't guessed already we are going to go ahead and be picking balen from the kingdom of heaven movie uh that's going to be our character and uh yeah it should be a lot of fun i really do want to focus on blacksmithing a little bit more in this campaign this is on 1.5.9 so unfortunately we don't have the brand new 1.6 blacksmithing changes but it should still be really fun nonetheless uh, so let's go ahead and grab up realistic and everything i like to just keep movement speed a little bit further down uh, but everything else can go high we will have the disabled birth and death that will leave that obviously off could we want to have death and birth in the campaign and i'm going to turn on auto allocate clan member perks as well because when we do uh live stream this which we will be doing i completely forgot to mention this we'll be live streaming this campaign tomorrow uh, so make sure you tune in um, and if you did if you do miss any of the live streams no need to fret whatsoever it's not a big deal because uh, we will be uh, we will be putting all of these campaign parts down below um, into a playlist so you can just watch them at any time that you want so no need to worry um, if again you do miss these live streams or you can't make them you can always just watch them afterwards it's super easy and you can just check out the playlist down below in the description. Uh, I also went ahead and ran a little bit of a um, a little bit of a uh, flag competition, and this was one of the, my favourite ones that did come out of it. I really did dig this. However, we might be changing the flags here and there. Um, but yeah, big shout out to Queek for doing this one, um, and this is one I'm going to be picking. But I definitely might do more in the future, so it looks really cool. Um, so we'll go ahead and keep that for now. Uh, yeah, I mean it looks pretty dope, right? It looks pretty dope. So here we go. This is our own custom Crusader Kingdom right here. As you can see. We have a decent uh, portion of the desert right there. Uh, and, you know, it makes our faction fairly strong to begin with, which is nice. Not only that, though, obviously, as you can see, we do have custom lords right there. If we just go to talk to any of them, uh, you can see the, the custom armor that they have, as well as that the majority of these lords are all you guys. All my king and lord level members have found their way into the campaign. So pretty much every one of these lords... You know, Goodhook Vizelis is our main liege of the kingdom. Uh, and yeah, as I said, and uh, Lord Lehman Ross is a character as well um, that you know supports me on the channel. So all the members have found their way in some way into this into this kingdom, which is very, very cool to have. We have Nicholas the Faithful here. We have Blueberry right there. We got the sons uh, of, you know, got Sivacus right there. Uh, Templar of the Ages with um, Ogik, Ogikak the Bold. And then finally, uh, these are some characters that we've going got left over, which I will be naming during the campaign as well um, as well as that, I will also be doing uh, members as well so if you are a, a member at any of the other levels you can also be getting companions later on in the campaign which should be really exciting so our first goal is just to join a lord's army I believe the crusaders do start off at war with because uh, with, with the Azari they are and also the, the Lerons Le Lerons Leron Jenkins uh, which uh, go ahead and spawn all the way over here you can also see obviously with carry to expand as well the map is absolutely massive it really really is so um you can see all the, the additional stuff so yeah really our first goal 
should be to go ahead and join up with one of the lords. I mean, we got an annoying player right there. Um, and I mean, we got some decisions to make. Who in the kingdom would we want to join up on? I'll also go ahead and show you guys the custom troops as well before we really get dived in uh, to this. So as you can see, we have a handful of custom troops. We start off with just some crusader recruits going down to our footmen. And again, there are several variants of all of these units. So many of them will have different armors, different helmets, as well as axes, all as the same unit, which will just make, will make this campaign campaign really fun. So we have the Crusader Footman going down to some Crusader Infantry. Uh, then we obviously have the heavier boys. And then finally, our elite guys right here who are very scary. And again, they have plenty of different chest armor pieces equipped with really good weapons. Then over on the other side, we have our spearmen, our voyeurs, and then finally our veteran pikemen as well. Our cavalry uh, are right here. So these are just the basic Crusader cavalry. And then we have our heavy ones with them amazing lancers. And then our bowmen will go down the ranks. Again, for some reason, this is invisible, but it's actually not in battle i don't really know what the issue is there and then we have our elite veteran archers as well that are very scary we also have a very cool noble tree that we'll look at at a late uh, date so uh yeah i mean our, our, as i said our first plan is to join up with a lord so uh, i guess we'll go ahead and do that but who do we join up with oh, do not mean to teleport there do we just join up with annoying player because he's here or do we look for another lord to follow we could obviously go ahead and join good hook the zealous as he is our liege, um, but eventually we're going to want to try and overthrow him. So maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe it's a good idea to try and find someone else here to uh, to befriend. You know, maybe in the Knights... Oh, sorry, he is the Knights Templar. Maybe in the, the Knights Hospitaller, we go ahead and join Nicholas the Faithful. Uh, so he was last seen in Asgar. I think maybe that's who we join. Uh, because as I said, we're going to eventually be trying to usurp the throne. And it will probably ha be beneficial to have other people like us. So let's head toward Asgar, which is all the way down here. Obviously, we're going to have to avoid... The the bandits along the way and it might not be a bad idea to try and recruit some soldiers uh, just to obviously prevent any bandits because we are also using an amazing mod called scum and villainy that has recently been updated <sighs> And um, that's exactly why I recruited um, recruited them. Oh, I could also join them if I wanted to as well. Um, so again, freelance allows you to join bandits. However, we are not scum. We've come to the Holy Land to make our fortune. And here is our first uh, battle. Uh, right here. But yeah, as I was saying, because uh, of Scum and Villainy, there's amazing bandit groups now scattered around the map, and they, they are no pushover either. They actually have some very, very scary units in their army. Even the basic tiers can definitely take us off, so this should be a, a fairly easy battle, honestly. Um, we actually have decent bowman skill as well, so it's actually quite nice to be able to snipe these guys, start leveling that bad boy up. Um, and uh, yeah, if I can take out maybe one or two of these guys before the fight even starts, that'll be absolutely huge. So maybe let's just try it. This guy's like one hit now. Oh, how do we miss that shot? He's getting too close now. Oh my god, how do we miss that again? Right, let's just pull out our sword. 70 damage right there. Try and lead some of them off. Tell the infantry to charge in. They'll be able to deal with them whilst these guys chase me down. At least I hope they will be. There you go. Actually, yeah, defending quite well. There you go. We'll get our bow out again. Just try and... Rack up some kills, and there you go. The last guy is running, but he will not escape. I mean, it serves them right for even thinking they could attack me. And boom, just like that, we've uh, gained our first victory. That is always nice to get. Uh, we can also level these guys up. I'm probably not... I mean, uh, it's probably better, because we'll keep these guys even when we leave the kingdom. So we'll upgrade these guys to our tier 2 infantry, just so, again, we're a little bit stronger, and we'll take on the loot. I do need to go buy some food, though. Uh, luckily, this is a grain place, so we'll go ahead and grab out just some grain. Uh, we have a few more soldiers we can actually carry a bit. Uh, let's, just, I don't know, let's just pick up five food. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have to worry about food when we finally join up with our future liege, but until we get there... We're going to need to. So this is just all the AI factions declaring war on me. These are all the new bandit factions that are in the game. So as you can see, there's quite a few of them. There is quite a few of them, uh, you know, that are spawning and they're just like declaring war. Just so basically all the other bandits are, you know, your enemies right off the bat. So we have to be very careful now. I can't be speeding around the map at just ludicrous speeds because I will end up finding myself slain. So who do we have here? We have a lord and then we have some of the normal guys as well. So who do we have? We have... Yeah, this is yeah, this is not the person I am looking for, so we'll go ahead and leave them uh, for now and continue to head down to Asgar. A few more lords, but again, nothing, not who I'm looking for. I assume he is still in Asgar um, as we'll head down there. Again, some more looters. We could also take them on, just try and grind up a little bit of experience before we do join our lord. It's honestly not a bad idea. Uh, there is Lord Julius there as well. It's so amazing seeing all you guys on the battlefield. It truly, truly is. 
Um, and I can't wait to go ahead and move forward. So there you go. You can already start to see a bit of a customization in our army. You know, different uh, different chess pieces right there. They all actually do have the same sword and shield. There are a few mixes in there, um, but we should be fine. Especially with our heavy infantry. Oh, yeah. Again, I'll be doing this throughout the campaign. But we also have a very cool map pack on as well. That, again, you'll be able to find in the, in the description over on the Discord. Um, but, yeah, this map pack is actually really, really dope. Adds in some uh, really cool, just kind of basic looking maps. They, they really work, and I'm, I'm very happy with them. Oh, good headshot right there. And we leveled up nice. We actually do need to do our level ups there as well. We did because obviously we're 30. We actually get some extra experience. Let's move in now. Perfect, boys. Good job. The true might of the Crusaders winning there. Absolutely perfect. And yeah, getting this renowned an extra, you know, this renowned early on is not a bad idea. Always helps out. But yeah, let's quickly go ahead and do the rest of our levels. I totally forgot about this. Our bowmanship has already already gone up, which is perfect. Um, so we can reduce the accuracy penalty by uh, by moving. I'm not sure if this also uh, matters when you're on horseback as well. I think for the most part, dead aim is just good. Because for the most part, you're going to be standing still whenever you shoot. And, and headshots basically one shot. Uh, we also leveled up our riding as well. And I think just increasing maneuverability is always going to be a good idea. Even though charge damage is very good. And also, we have a lot of heavy knights, so maybe just boosting that up is actually really important because, you know, our armies are going to be made of these heavy crusader knights, so getting full speed is very important. And we actually have a lot of focus points. I'm going to take another focus point into blacksmithing because I feel like that's always, you know, that's going to be our character. I really want to try and focus a bit on blacksmithing. And we also have another skill point. I mean, we're going to stick some points in leadership just because it's always important and we're going to always need that. Another point in athletics uh, to try and get that up, obviously, when we are running solo that's gonna be super important I and mean, i guess i've got another vigor point i guess i'm gonna just oh sorry another major point i'm gonna i'm gonna stick it in vigor because yeah getting our main stats up is gonna be important and then i think from now on i'm gonna be dumping all the other points into social just to get that leadership up for eventually when we do go independent because going independent is gonna be something that we are planning on doing and you know, you know, it's going to be important for when we do. However, I believe in the latest updates of the freelancer, there's lots more chances. So he isn't actually here. However, we should be able to see exactly where he's gone now. Um, if you don't know, whenever you oh, we're actually being raided, so he's obviously up here as the Azerai War continues. Um, but yeah, if you guys don't know, um, whenever you go into a city, it basically refreshes the it basically refreshes the encyclopedia. So you can always get updated positions. All you have to do is just go inside of the city. It's a really nice tip. Um, but yeah, let's head towards this. Hopefully he is still here as the army is. Good. So there's STJ, another member. Doesn't look like he is still here. I mean, this is one of the uh, the biggest issues. He's always just trying to find the lords. Uh, you got Civicus here. I mean, joining Civicus wouldn't be a bad idea either. He's a mighty, mighty warrior. Um, I really want to join the Knights Hospitallers and uh, see what I can do. So let's just move into this city. Uh, obviously, if there's a tournament, there's Blueberry as well right there. Um, if there's a tournament here, it could be a there is a tournament. So let's go ahead and do that whilst we're whilst we're looking, try and spice things up a little bit. So nice, yes. This is a this is a glaive. I'm pretty sure this is a poem, but I'm pretty sure you can swing it as a glaive. But oh my god, look at all the lords uh, that are currently in here. We got Edward and 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 Folk as well. Oh no, that's it. Oh, I mean, obviously both of them made it through. Luckily, our bracket isn't too difficult. Yeah, it's quite an open field here as well. And look how slow we are. Oh my god, we need to get our athleticism up. I think because we literally have ten athleticism. And our stats, I mean, we. Oh, I, mean, I, I haven't played, like, from the beginning. Uh, luckily, we have RTS cameras, so I can just speed things up. Um, I haven't played from, like, a beginning of a campaign in a while. So being this, uh, being this crap is always a bit of a difficulty. You know, not having amazing stats, uh, you know, like you get towards the mid to late game is always a pain. So, nice. So as long as we can avoid killing him, we should be okay. And we're on horseback as well. Okay. This is fine. We should be okay here. It's hard to see who's on whose side, though. But I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy is not on my side. So we'll try and take him out. 47 damage is not bad. Attack. 20 damage as well. Let's obviously make, try and make sure we block as well. 40 damage there. Yeah, I don't think you're on my side either. Yeah, we'll just put it. We'll drop that flag, even though it does look cool. Just try and take some of these guys down. 94 damage. Nice. We've almost actually took out that knight. I basically got everybody to like 1 HP. So hopefully we can just finish them off. Ugh. 
Oh my god, I've literally hit everybody like once. What is the team doing? There you go. Edward's taken care of. He was the scariest person. I'm very glad to have him out of the tournament. So another one taken out. Another one taken out. Is there no one else? Is there no one else? God, I will be making a... I should be using my money to bet. Okay, this is the hardest part of the tournament for sure. Even Vovo, if we make it through this, we're still fighting Crusader Heavy Cavalry, so not going to be easy. Oh my god, look how slow I am compared. Look at my armor. Okay, we're going to have to go full gamer mode. Activate the gamer mode. Look how much faster he is. Okay, I mean, that's okay. That's a good start. We just have to really try and keep our... Look at his weapon as well. We just have to really try and keep our distance and get lucky. Luckily, uh, the shield blocks the majority of his assaults, but I want to make sure that I don't mess up at all. Trying to get a shield bash and a slice. Again, it's all about footwork. You guys might not realize, but like the, the actual being fast and like having good athletics is actually really important because it allows you to do some great stuff uh, with like out just out maneuvering your person, out reaching your person, just kind of having better footwork actually does make a big difference. Okay, like he's like two hit, two more hits. We just get two more lucky hits without taking too many. Oh, nice. We took him down. We managed to get around his shield right there. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, I feel much confident about it. I mean, obviously, I assume the uh, heavy cavalry is going to win. Oh, no, the Crusader Initiate won. I mean, I've got this. So we'll, we'll make a little bit of money here. It's like 20 gold, but we'll do it nonetheless. Imagine if I lose at this final hurdle, would not be good. Against a bloody initiate. I think this guy's tier 3. Nice. No, already 50 damage right there. Should be okay. Let's keep our shield up. Yeah, nice. Yeah, he is no match. Considering we took down the mighty, mighty uh, folk. He is going down. And nice. Getting that Oak Sarissa is perfect. We gained actually a decent amount of renown as well. So I will take that. Um, and yeah, not a bad victory. So let's take a look at this new weapon we, we just picked up. We'll also go into the, the trade as well. See if there's anything great. I mean, obviously we have a lot of stuff to sell. Uh, not the grain, though. Uh, give me back my grain, please. Um, yeah, we'll sell all that crap. And all the armor. And boom. So we have our grain, and obviously we have our brand new weapon as well, um, which we'll stick on. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you can use this weapon like a glaive, uh, which is just perfect. But yeah, an extra, a bit bigger spear is always very, very nice. Um, so cool. It made a little bit of money as well. But we are still on the, uh, the hunt. We are still on the hunt for our man, Nicholas the Faithful. Where is he? I mean, he's last seen in Asgard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head down to Asgard off camera and hopefully join up with him. Okay, so we've arrived at Asgard and it still does not seem like he is here. So we are going on a bit of a wild goose chase, but there's another tournament and I, I'm not one to go ahead and say no to tournaments. We get some good items we can sell. Is there anyone amazing here besides Garibald? Probably not. Like, we can, we can probably do this. So I'm going to start trying to make some money. Uh, I, I feel quite confident after the last one. So let's go in, hope for the best. I mean, there's plenty of teams here, so anything can happen. All it takes is a lone... All it takes is a lone javelin to come in. But we'll come in and just obviously try and even the odds a little. We are blue, right? Yeah, we're blue. Let's just try and get stuck in, kill the archers as best as we can. I mean, the worst thing is going to be dying just to like a rogue javelin. That's going to that's gonna be what gets us. Oh, we killed the Heavy Crusader perfectly. This is a good opportunity to really level up here. Let's help out our boy there fighting. Nice. Garibald is down. Garibald is the scariest of the lords. So him being slain. Oh, that poor archer just got absolutely sandwiched. Let's make our way over here. Another Crusader militia gone. This is going to be a clean sweep. And look at that horse go. My god, what is that man eating? Definitely has his Weetabix. And I imagine a lot of you Americans are like, what the hell is a Weetabix? A bit too early there. Charge damage coming in, though. We do have that bonus charge damage as well, which might rack up with our new perk. You're blue as well, so I don't need to attack you. The lone horse over here, I think, is the only man left. No, you're friendly as well. God, we have a uh, clean sweep this. Yeah, there you go. Just that lone horse left to clear up. So we will move in. To try and clear him uh, from the battlefield. Perfect. Nice, nice, nice. I will take that. So, um, yeah, we're on to the next round now. So, I mean, it's a pretty hard setup, honestly. 
Get our shield out as well. Just keep on dropping them flags. It's not really worth having. Oh, how did I miss that strike? God damn. Maybe trying to take out Garibald again. Oh, this sword is just... I'm just not used to wielding a sword uh, this short before, you know? I'm used, to, I'm used to handling large weaponry, large swords, long, large phallic objects. But today, the sword will simply have to do. And he's actually a yeah, friendly as well. I mean, thankfully, because of the way the tournament is set up, we don't actually have to kill everybody. We just have to be the last two remaining and make sure we have enough kills. It's taking out my horse. Okay, Crusader's now taken care of us. At least one kill for me. Try and take out Garibald. He tries to snipe me with his javelins. To no avail. Oh my god, he dis dis did dismount me, though. Let's keep that shield up. Oh no! Garibald, how could you? And yeah, we did not make it through. Is Garibald at least going to win? Yeah, he does. Okay, I, I feel less uh, less disheartened from that. You know, Garibald can take that one. But yeah, I'll continue on trying to find this elusive man, the elusive leader of the Knights Templar, and I'll bring it back to you guys when we found him. Okay, guys, so it does actually seem like, I didn't actually notice in the encyclopedia, but it does seem like the Knights Hospitella Lord and Nicholas the Faithful has found himself uh, imprisoned after a, a brutal battle. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to join him. However, our, our main liege of the Knights Templar, Guthook, is right here. So we're going to go over to him. You can see some of his amazing soldiers right here. I am Balin, and who are you? I am Guthook the Zealous, Lord of these lands. Yes, you are indeed. Well, there is something I would like to discuss of you. I'd propose a military alliance, I wish. No, I would like to join your ranks as a humble soldier. Please let me join, my good sir. And boom, just like that, we are now part of his army. There are some things we can do whilst he is moving around. Like right now, we have nothing uh, that we can influence him. You know, we can't tell him to go and do stuff. I am just a humble soldier in his army. However, I can go ahead and start to level up. Also as well, uh, our gear, our gear is going to be, um, you know, completely normal now. We're just going to be a simple levy. I will I'll lose my gear. I will get this gear back when I do go ahead and uh, level up. When I do leave his army, all my stuff will return to me along with my soldiers. However, for now, I've just been given these outfits. I've been given my uniform and, uh, you know, that, that is that really. But I do have a few other options I can do. Uh, I can also train with some troops, which is nice. So this is going to be a good thing. Uh, there's a black market as well. You can buy and trade soldiers there, uh, which is quite cool. So yeah, I can train uh, with the soldiers. I'll get a little bit wounded, but that will give me some bonuses in athleticism and also in one-handed. And that's pretty important. You can also go ahead and spend some money to get yourself healed. Or can you not do that? Yeah, you can buy some extra bandages, uh, which is quite a lot of money considering we're not getting too much. Um, but I can spend that money just to keep on training. Uh, it's a nice way of leveling up. And you might think, hey, that's a bit OP, right? Surely you can just spam this and make loads of cash and go ahead and really do a lot and just get like loads of levels. Well, you get quite a lot to begin with, but it does definitely um, plateau out very, very quickly um, because the, the numbers just don't mean as much. So you have to kind of wait for yourself to get healed, but it's a nice way of like leveling up your stats. Uh, as well as that, you can also go ahead and start uh, getting reassignments. So for example, if I wanted to be getting bonuses elsewhere, I could maybe become a watchman and that'll give me different opportunities uh, to do right here. And I can go ahead and uh, yeah, do some crazy stuff. And as you level up, you can level up. So obviously if I was to be a watchman, this would give me uh, scouting tactics and bow skill instead of uh, one-handed, two-handed athleticism. So uh, there's, there's like loads of things you can do as well as that with the mods i'm using uh right now uh, obviously we're wounded so we can't train uh with some of the mods i'm using we have the better time mod on uh, meaning because again a lot of the time the ai just roams around like a headless chicken until there's a war uh so i've got the better time mod on meaning i can press control i can press space and we just zoom off like a spaceship look at us go oh nice we leveled up as well uh just passively which is always good but yeah the better time mod is a necessity so here we go. We've got increased movement speed by 10% or more HP. Definitely movement speed. You guys saw how slow we were. Uh, yeah, it's super important. We get that up and let's also put a point in one-handed skill as well as that's always something that is important so uh yeah is the kingdom at war right now because that's going to be obviously pretty important I, I think we just came out of that war against the azurai no we are still at war with the azurai um and obviously all the other these are all the uh the bandit squads that roam around the, the campaign map so you can see there's so many of them um okay cool well let's uh yeah let's just go ahead and hopefully um uh Guthook will lead us into an army 
which he has literally just formed, which is perfect. Again, we can spaceship off at like 20 times speed as all the men come to the banner. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can, we can move off and maybe engage the Azurai. Oh my God. When the boys go crusading, we've got a thousand brave men. What's our kind of makeup of the soldiers? I mean, a lot of recruits, right? 390 recruits is pretty scary, but a lot of cavalry as well. Over 100 horses, which is going to be our main, like, our main forte. The cavalry is going to be super important. I wonder as well if, um, if, no, I was going to say, I wonder if the leader of the, the, the hospitalers were in here, but I can't see Nicholas. I think Nicholas is actually still imprisoned unfortunately do let me know this in the comments because this is actually a question i do have and I'm, I'm a little bit curious about is do um if i was to change lord would i still keep my rank like would, if i'm a, if i'm a, a level two or level three soldier and then i change to a different lord in the same culture i'm pretty sure i can i keep my like status as a soldier i, I keep that level two or level three and i don't have to start again but maybe i'm mistaken uh, do let me know in the comments down below um, but it looks like this will be our first battle. No, it doesn't. And we just made peace with them. Oh, it's going to be such a shame if we just made peace. Which we have. I hate it. I hate it when the AI does that. You know, you're just about to take something. And the AI is like, nope. No way is that happening. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. So now we're no longer at war with anybody, which really sucks. However, with the power of editing, I'll cut it now until, you know, a combat does happen. Because I'm sure that's what you guys want to see. Okay, so I've been training hard and been able to get my one-handed and two-handed skill up a bit along with my athletics. I really want to try and get this Fury because it just makes us a lot faster and able to handle our weapon much better. However, this form uh, fitting armor is quite nice as well because when we do eventually get this heavily knightly armor, this will actually be really nice because again, we'll just be able to move fast. So I'm a bit indecided here, but we have managed to get this one-handed skill up, which is good. Um, and I'm going to probably grab up just deflect. I think that's going to be quite useful. Again, having that handling a little bit more efficient just means we can swing around that sword and do multiple strikes a lot, lot quicker. So yeah, I think deflect is going to be quite nice. And also as well, it does uh, mean that our troops are much more efficient. So basically, it means that our uh, one-handed infantry is basically going to be acting as if they are two hand uh, our level two infantry. So definitely something to complain about. We are in a pretty minor battle right now, and there's no way I'm going to be able to get a kill on any of these looters. I'm going to try my best. I mean, none of the arrows are actually hit them right now. Um, I'm going to try my best and grab a kill or two from this uh, before the rest of the army does get here. But it's going to be very, very close. Because we need, I think, four kills to go ahead and grab up. No, the knights are coming in. No. No, let me get it. Okay, that's one kill. I'll take that. And we leveled up as well. So these small battles are actually pretty worth it. I can also take this time as well to show you guys some of the units. So you can already see just the sheer amount of different units that we do have, uh, you know, just in the cavalry alone. Uh, it's looking pretty, you know, wide and numerous. Our infantry is very vast right now as the men cheer for Christendom. And there's not going to be too many heavy, like, high-tier units in our army at the moment. But hopefully, as soldiers continue to level up, you'll be able to see them. And you should be able to see all the different types of weapons all my soldiers have as well. There's, like, maces, axes, hammers. And then the archers back here again, mainly just for lower-tier archers. So nothing too crazy. I think this is, yeah, this is our super elite uh, two-handed infantry guy. And this is our, one of our elite archers as well. Very fierce indeed. And obviously you have a flag right there as well of Bear My Banner. Look at that. Oh, it just looks so awesome. Is he just like fluttering that around, cheering? Man, this is going to be such a fun campaign for stuff like this. So, I mean, we managed to get, you know, the small battles are actually quite useful. So you can now see what we have now. Have one kill. We've gained a little bit of fame. My loyalty to the Knights Templar has gone up a little bit as well. Um, and we gained some good stats as well. So we actually leveled up properly. And now we have another attribute point to stick in somewhere. I mean, for the most part, our smithing, our athletics, and our riding, all pretty good. So what I might actually go ahead and do is just stick another point down here in social. And then maybe a point in charm. Start trying to work towards this, you know, um, as... Because I believe when you fight big battles and you get relationships with people, you do also get some charm up as well. And there are plenty of opportunities in the soldiers camp here when you reassign to get more stats up. But for now, we're just going to continue to train with the soldiers, you know, with the drill soldiers. And yeah, just try our best, basically. But yeah, still no war, unfortunately. There are wars going ar around Cat Radio, and you'll start to see a lot more factions changing. Oh, something to note as well that you guys might... Oh, yeah, we've just fallen an army, so we must be going to war with someone. Um, but yeah, something you guys might not be aware of is that the Romans um, that we have in the game, so we're using, obviously, the Romans, are up here in the green now. They're not down in the south. So don't go to the reds or 
the I don't think the blues have Roman soldiers. It's going to be the greens up in the north that have them. And then these guys are going to be going to be kind of like the Byzantine Empire type troops. It should be really cool. And there you go. War has been declared. We are now at war with which is pretty much the Valandians, but they're, they're Gallic Valandians. There's like a mix of like Gauls and uh, and medieval soldiers. It's kind of a bit weird. Um, but oh my God, the realm. The realm has united. Look at that. And as you can see, we do have some like uh, pre-existing like Azurai factions in our army. Um, that's because Freelancer goes ahead and creates this clan. I'll show you guys. It creates this clan right here, this Crusader Generals. And uh, Ramsey was a bit unsure of how to change this to be my culture and be my like medieval soldiers that he created. Um, so we kind of got some of them in, but it's kind of cool. These are kind of like the um, these are kind of like I don't know, like the the Crusader factions that have come. No, not the Crusader factions, but the Eastern factions that have kind of just joined us in this Eternal Crusade. You know, for prosperity or for whatever reason. So I kind of dig that but yeah let's make our way over i wonder if we're gonna be going for this castle or maybe a city first probably a castle because like, i can't imagine vlandia have yeah we're going for the city we're just going balls to the wall and this is a pretty contentious city as well this will be our foothold in the mainland really um so taking this is going to be important i just hope the army does stay together and this will be a hard fight as well how many uh, defenders do they have here can i see that i'm not sure if i can like hover over this doesn't look like it over there uh, yeah, we actually don't know how many they have, uh, which is unfortunate. We've got a few more parties. Annoying player on a raid or two right there. And there you go. The assault is commencing. I also don't know why, for whatever reason, the AI just loves to attack at nighttime. And my God. I mean, we have 1,800 men. This is kind of crazy already how many soldiers we have. But it's not like we're any bigger than any other faction. We have a very similar amount of settlements to the majority of the other factions. So uh, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things we can do as well to maybe, if we feel like this faction is a bit too overpowered, which I don't think it will be, um, what we can do is we can just, you know, break away from them and try and take them down, uh, convince some lords to join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play quite passive in this one um because i need about i think three more kills to level up and be a level two infantryman get better armor get better equipment so i think what i might try and do is play a little bit passive watch a battle from you know from a bird's eye view is it gonna move me though uh, i don't know if it is does it move me yeah slowly but surely it moves me so yeah what i might do is i might run all the way back here and then watch a battle a little bit um in the hopes that it doesn't yeah, because I'm going to be moving very slowly. Good, good, good. And this way we can watch the battle unfold. Watch the soldiers move forward. And you can start to see a few of our, our heavily armored knights there as well. With uh, the awesome helmets as well. Hopefully the battle isn't too dark. It shouldn't be. My brightness settings are, are relatively turned up. As all the banners. All the artillery coming in. Man, that was brutal. I probably got a lot of kills. Yeah, that did indeed. Another volley as well. We need to mount them walls ASAP. We really, really do. Hopefully the battering ram can make it to the gate. It have got ballistas firing heavy at it, trying to stop that from coming in. Some more artillery ranges down. And it's quite cool as well, having them Crusader Generals that have a handful of these uh, Eastern troops in as that was a direct hit. Brutal. Where am I? I'm still all the way back here, okay? I just, again, want to make sure that I just don't die so we can, you know, obviously the initial part of the siege is going to be bloody. Hopefully that battering ram can make it. The artillery is coming in thick and fast and the defenders are preparing. The crossbows are now firing down on us. So in one of the test versions of this mod, which, I mean, some men are running. You cowards. Come back. Oh my god, I can't believe that. The spearmen are running. Uh, but in some of the test versions of this mod, uh, it was quite funny because... Well, artillery coming in as well. It was quite funny because a lot of the uh, low-tier infantry didn't have... Um, didn't have any, they just had these really long spears and they couldn't use their shields because it was like a proper just a two-handed spear. Um, but we obviously had dish, uh, changed that. So in, in sieges, we would really take a lot of damage. Um, well, I'm going to go over on this right-hand side, I think. Because this left-hand side is not good. Why are you guys falling back? Are you not going to be pushing up? Okay, they're pushing up to them ladders. I'm kind of curious why these guys aren't moving up. Got some archers there. Battering ram has now made its way through. Perfect. So the assault should be going in. Again, I don't want to be like the first people. I want to want to wait until they kind of, yeah, make their, their way up a little bit already. You know, so there's not as many crossbows coming in. There's not as many 
soldiers going down. Yeah, they've kind of cleared out the walls, but I can just kind of sneak in. Because again, if I die, that's it. Uh, I could also try and pick up a bow maybe as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to get the chance to. Where is it? I just need to be very careful here. Is there any good weapons as well? That's also a really important thing in this campaign is like trying to pick up. We'll take out that sword as well. Uh, it's really important to always just try and scavenge equipment. Because if you can get a better shield or a really good sword, you can rack up them kills a lot quicker. And move in. Okay, let's push our way forward. Oh my god, there's a little death trap here, really. Let's obviously make sure we have our, our backs turned. Soldiers are moving. I mean, it might just be better to go through the gate. Or maybe over there would be better. I think over on this side would be better. Oh, there's actually some soldiers out here. Well, this is perfect for kills. If we can win... Be very careful as more soldiers form in. I mean, they actually sallied out the gate. Very effectively. Is that a kill? Perfect. That's one kill down. Yeah, reinforcements are coming in. You can see all of them coming in. We need them, though. They sallied out the gate, and they're doing some serious damage to us. Again, we'll just try to rack up as many kills as we can whilst we're here. FPS is a little bit chunky here as the AI figures out what to do. That was a nice little sally out from the AI. Really cleared this out. I'm not sure, though. Have we, have we got many men up there? Kind of want to go up this way because it's closest. That's what we're going to try. Screw it. If we go down, we go down. We've already got a kill, which isn't bad. I mean, I'd love to level up to level two before the end of this. If I if I could get to level two before the end of this battle, that would be huge. Because it's just such much better. Like, the equipment really tops out at, like, tier you know, four or four. Oh, that's not good. Let me up, let me up, let me up. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Oh, I can't get my shield up. Okay, perfect. We've made our way in. That's the most important thing. There's two soldiers. Okay, that's not good. Let's just try and take this guy out. It's one down. This one as well. Perfect. That's level two already. There's a few more crossbows. Just be very careful. We just do want to make sure we get we get dived on. Oh, there's loads of them here. Yeah, this is exactly what I did not want to have happen. And our shield is not going to withstand this so much longer. Yeah, I think we're going down here. Yeah, down. I mean, two kills honestly isn't too bad. Um, realistically, I could have definitely got more and we just had to maybe pay a bit more attention. But it is what it is. You know, when there's so many of them there, we just don't really stand a chance. And now we just have to rely on our men to storm the walls. I mean, now that we've broken through the gate, the majority of the casualties, you know, is definitely going to be out of, you know, out of the way. Um, and our quality will start to show, you know, we have 1,800 men. And I really like as well the balancing we've got. I feel like the, you do lose a lot of men assaulting this settlement. I mean, not a ton more, but we've lost about 100 and something more men than them. And that's exactly how it should be. You know, attackers should always lose vastly more assaulting a settlement like this. You know, regardless of their quality, they should, you know, take a lot of casualties. The FPS is not my friend right now as we move around again. When the AI really gets stuck in, obviously these are big thousand man battles as well, so... You know, the AI does uh, does struggle a little bit you know, when it comes to these extreme ones. I am also on 1.9 as well. The performance is much better in 1.10. You can see the soldiers are continuing to push forward. Obviously, over on this left-hand side as well. They're, you know, they're pushing in. I mean, the, the artillery is still coming in, though. That's maybe what I should have dedicated myself to do. And I think when we finally get to the, the top ranks... Um, when we finally get to the top ranks and we're able to control soldiers, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Is like our goal with our like five to ten men is going to be to shut off the artillery. Because you can see how much damage it is doing as that man just gets flung off. Oh man. If only sieges were like ultimately fixed as well with all the pathfinding and the lag issues sorted out, they would be so spectacular. Seems like we made a bit of a bridgehead over here though, which is good able to clear this off. If only more men were coming up, I mean, if we were funneling up here, we'd be much better off. The gate, though, the AI is holding the gate very effectively. I'm so surprised there. They are doing a really good job at that gate. I mean, we are making progress of some soldiers breaking through, but they're able to quick, like, this is like Helm's Deep at the Hornburg, as just bodies get thrown into the gate. Got this man right there, not knowing what the hell he's doing. And yeah, this left-hand side, like, why is nobody attacking this left-hand side? Does a banner lord things, I think. Uh, but hopefully we'll break through. I'll, I'll probably just speed this up and skip towards the end. And, you know, we're obviously going to take this. We have so many men on the field. And, they, you know, the sooner they run out, the worse. But, I mean, they've killed 400 men. That's not bad. 
Oh, as well, something to actually mention uh, in this one is that we have a cool mod on called AI Defend Yourself. So as the AI retreats from battle, if there's an enemy soldier by them, they will actually fight to the death. They'll turn around as they try and back up, they will turn around and fight. So it won't just be a silly thing of the AI uh, randomly just, you know, running away and not giving it, you know, a damn of their life. They will be trying their best to keep themselves alive. And is that it? There's one lone soldier left. Where the hell is he? See, oh, he's right there getting absolutely swarmed. Yeah, there he is. Look at him go. Nice. The settlement has been taken. Heavy casualty. I mean, I say not. It wasn't that too bad. And Blueberry, no. Oh, my God. Blueberry is our first death in the campaign. He is a custom character. And I can't believe he died in the first battle. Man, that is brutal. That is really really brutal but don't worry guys if you do get a like if it ends up if your character does die in this you know don't worry about it there will be plenty of chances to get more characters in the campaign so it's not really something you have to worry about too much you know if you lose one character generally every couple episodes i'm like yeah sure you can try and get another one uh, especially the lords and kings they'll get dibs as well um but yeah man brutal first battle good to see you barlin so we should get some relationship with good hook which is good because eventually we're going to betray him most likely and boom we leveled up let's go so we have a decision to make do we want to be a footman or a bowman and i think my ideal goal is to be a, a heavy horse uh, like a horse jouster cavalryman uh so to do that we need to go down the footman route so boom we have now been promoted to level two i think we can now get asked for reassignment no not quite yet we're still a, a novice i think uh, which is absolutely fine. When we hit trainer, I think we can start getting our tactics up and, and other stuff. And quartermaster is also really good for leadership. So I like that that's been implemented in the game because it gives you loads of opportunities. Uh, we have been severely wounded. Uh, what, what's our equipment looking like now? Um, now that we are obviously level two, obviously Good Hook would have outfitted us with a new set of equipment. Uh, nothing too bad right now. Nothing too bad uh, whatsoever. Our flag's messed up, but I can, I, can, I can sort that out. We got a much better helmet, which is good. Uh, yeah, this helmet's 23 armor. Decent body armor. I mean, this is pretty good as well. Fort 16 armor is not bad. I mean, a better shield and, and a, a simple bastard sword as well, uh, which is really good. That's a good sword. Uh, that's actually a really good sword. It moves very fast. Not tons of damage, but yeah, that's a really good sword, actually. Nice. Uh, so we already hit level two in this episode. I'm super happy with that. Hopefully, we can have another, uh, another battle before the end. I imagine, obviously, we'll be dumping off a garrison. Uh, but the Crusaders take our first victory. We also have this settlement under siege. I wonder if that's also under siege by us or, or what. The AI is building up a bit of an army there. But it looks like we are returning to the Holy Land. No, we're not. We're still just roaming around. I think we will be returning back to base camp to recruit some more soldiers. Uh, as, you know, obviously we lost 400 men in that battle. That is, that is quite a lot. Um, that is quite a lot indeed. So as you can see as well, you also have the uh, the naval stuff as well. I don't think it really works in... in uh, we look like we're in Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, I don't think it really works in when you're in an army because this happens. Uh, but overall, it's really awesome. There's a massive... There you go. Everybody's off in their boats now. And the army is broken apart. Um, but no, it's really cool because obviously you are roaming around the sea. And uh, previously, it used to be tied to just these lanes. But now they've made it so you can pretty much go anywhere uh, bar a few areas. Oh, my God. Is that... Whose army is that? Is that one of the uh, bandit squads? I think that must be. Oh, no, we're also at war with these guys. Were these guys allied? Um, They got two clans. Yeah, they're allied with the Royal Valandians, a.k.a. the Ghouls. We're actually at war with them as well. Interesting. Do they take any land? No, they haven't, thank God. And that's one of the really cool things, again. Like, I feel like this episode, a lot of the time, is just me mentioning, um, mentioning all the mods we're using. Cool, we managed to escape there, which is good. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's one of, another one of the really cool things is that we do have the diplomacy model on. So factions can form out alliances and they can get married together and stuff like that just becomes very, very important. But my God, I cannot believe that Blueberry died literally this early on. Man, that is absolutely brutal. So we're almost back up to 100 at HP. I'll just obviously really speed things up right now as the camera gets left behind as we go on our spaceship. Cool. So can we do anything else now? So now we're level two. We need to be level three to require an assignment. So I guess we'll just continue to train with the soldiers and like continue to get this up. Athleticism is almost at that next level. One handed is getting there as well, um, which is nice. Yeah, I feel like this is just a great way because again, it feels like it's 
It's like covering that early game hump where you would normally just be fighting looters and training your stats up. This is a great way of, you know, kind of supplementing that whilst also having the really fun, uh, you know, early game of fighting in an army and working your way up and and doing all that awesome stuff, which, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge, huge fan of. Um, also as well, I'm not sure if I, sh I did show you guys the troop tree, but just to show you really quickly the exact path we're going down. So ideally, so we are right now at a Crusader Footman, yeah, and we're going to go down to Spearman next. Then we obviously we could go down to the voyeurs and then the uh, the like the pikemen with the halberds and stuff like that. But we're gonna go down to this is what we want to inevitably be crusader heavy cavalry. We're obviously gonna have to be a crusader cavalry first. Um, but yeah, the heavy cavalry is exactly what we want to do, uh, which will hopefully be yeah amazing to uh, to set up. And once we get that, hopefully by then we'll get command of like five to six other heavy horses. And we can just go around as like a heavy cavalry squad protecting our lord. And yeah, it'll be amazing. I'm really, really looking forward to it. So what I'll do is I'll jump ahead until we get into another battle. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so we are now at war again. The war with the Valandians and the Libertarians over on the island have now finished. However, um, obviously we, we've managed to secure that settlement and also the castle, which was really nice actually. And that castle was given to Gur Gur who took the settlement for himself. And then the castle was given over to, uh, to the bold himself, uh, which is very nice. Look at that sword on his back as well. My God, beautiful in he doesn't actually have a settlement, so it's good to be he does one. But we are now at war with the Western Romans, who aren't exactly going to be legionaries. As, as I said earlier, the legionaries are very much the, uh, the green guys in the top north. These are going to be more Byzantine Romans, so that's going to be fun. I have been training hard as well, and we have been able to get a, another stat right here. I think we're going to get form-fitting armor. Um, again, it's just going to decrease the armor weight, which is really nice. Um, so I think we're going to grab that up for sure. And, and stick another focus point in one-handed skill because right now we are, you know, we are doing a lot of it. Eventually, we're going to have to shift our focus to poem, but yeah, I think we need more, more kind of grinding in that. You can also see our charm went up as well from all the battles that we've been doing. Even though we've actually only been in one battle. Um, but yeah, let's go off to war. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to form a fairly large army again. We'll see if the, the kingdom uh, is as, uh, I guess, as... Unit like as, as unified as it was last time because again in Battle Lord a lot of the time the armies do get broken up into like smaller bigger like smaller armies scattered around so we'll have to see exactly what that does but right now I assume we're just forming up as well as that as well we did have like the beginning of the game um the beginning of the game kind of setup where everybody just has max soldiers so that's going to start to affect right now though uh get hooked the zealous isn't being very zealous we're playing very passive um, even though, yeah, we've already got one force, I think, sieging it. Yeah, we've got annoying player leading one army over there, already sieging them, actually. And then we're going to be coming across as well. Man, if this faction does dominate the map, though, we're really going to have to, uh, we're really going to have to maybe take, try and take them down a, a peg or two. But one of the great things, I think, about, um, about this, uh, Carrot Expanded Kingdoms is that when a faction does get really big, a lot of the other factions tend to jump on them. So for example, you know, if we're fighting these guys, like as soon as all our non-aggression packs break, you know, there's a very good chance because whenever you end a war, you get a non-aggression pack, so you can't just immediately declare war again. There's a very good chance that the Azurai and the other desert factions will attack us along with the Valandians. And again, they'll like each other a lot more um, and be much more inclined to... Only 200 this time, so we can be a bit more aggressive. They'll be much more inclined to form non-aggressions permanently and defensive alliances. You know, that stuff will start to form, and that really hampers down just one faction dominating the entire map, which, again, is, is so good, and it's something that should just be in the base game. Okay, so we are a little bit more heavily armored now. Our shield is uh, still pretty decent as our, our soldiers move forward. And we're going to have to, yeah, just push our way forward. Hopefully no one else dies. I can't believe we've already lost one brave soul already in this Let's Play. It's just so brutal. Blueberry, you'll be remembered as the first man to go down. Now, I definitely would try and pick up maybe a bow and arrow. Because even though I'm not a, uh, a proper archer, I can still get kills with that. You know, javelins, missiles, all that stuff is perfect. So... If we can personally grab ourselves a, a bow and just start racking up, you know, kills. I think the next threshold to go up another level is 12 kills. Which obviously quite a lot. Some axes going off. Is that axe here? Oh, my axe almost here. Let's just obviously take cover for now. Let the rest of the, uh, the AI push up the battering ram we are equipped with. We could be super ballsy and try and get the ladders up just so the AI will attack. But right now the defenders are just holding firm. 
then ballistas will probably rip through our ranks as well. Any uh, any piece of equipment down here? We've got another little platoon of archers back there as well. As the infantry pushes up with that battering ram. Let's hold firm, boys. So I'm just getting a nice little close eye here. And any soldiers. Okay, the archers are now starting to open up that siege point. Perfect. And we'll probably be one of the, the first couple soldiers in, I think, because that's the best way as Sharp you know, has taught me. If you've ever watched the Sharp Eagle series, it is to be the first man into the breach. A fall on hope. That's the best way to uh, not get forgotten and get a promotion. That's exactly what we're looking for. So a lot of kills. Also, if we can take control of this position right there, that'll be perfect because that'll give us access to the rocks and we can start lobbing rocks on the defenders at the gates. And that'll get us a lot of kills. So nice, that battering ram is almost up there. I mean, again, we could try and sneak our way forward, but I just don't think it's worth it. Again, we only get one life. It's all like we can just command someone else. So playing super passive is not a bad idea. But we have hundreds of soldiers here. I mean, what's what's the size? Okay, we're advancing now. Yeah, I mean, we have 600 men on the field, which is pretty gnarly. There you go. The men are going to be pushing up that, that equipment. Again, I'm not going to be like the first man over. But I'll be one of the first, that is for sure. I'll let them make me a little par first. Obviously, their defenders now come as well. Up, up, up you go, boys. And the archers should have a pretty good uh, pretty good view of it. Yeah, I mean, actually, maybe not, though. I don't know if I'm breaking through there anytime soon. Maybe the left-hand side would be a little bit better. Because that is pretty thick in defenses. How's this side looking? Because generally the AI does seem to be... Yeah, this side looks much less... Uh, much less difficult to actually besiege. Yeah, it seems like the AI is really focused on that right flank. So let's just make sure we don't die to any of these archers. Again, it would be amazing if the AI was using both ladders. But it is what it is. Okay, let's get our, ourselves up here. I mean, there's still plenty of them here. Oh yeah, look at that as well. Very careful still. Oh, that's a good kill right there. We have to be very careful here. We fight our way up. Ouch, that's an arrow in my back. Oh, I really don't want to go down with just one kill. I'm actually going to be really passive, I think. Or do we just jump up here? I mean, this position is pretty much ours now. Screw it, let's go. Let's go, let's go. It's one kill, it's two. Perfect. We are being pushed back here. Nice. Let's push this way. Push this way. We've got more men here. It's another kill right there. Perfect. Let's keep on going. Oh, swing. Shield. Oh, okay. Where are the boys? Yeah, we got completely closed off as soon as I got up there. So how many kills? Again, three kills. It's not great, honestly. Um, I definitely could have maybe played a bit more passive. I think the gate would have been the better way to go this time. But the archers are hammering us at the gate. Look at that. So we need to go up, right? What's, what's up here? Yeah, this way. Sorry, the uh, terrain here is really bad. Yeah, the archers right there are just volleying in on us. They've got us in a death trap right now. The AI is actually performing really well. Really, really well. You see one of our heavily armored knights just taking them down, but going down himself, man. And again, the AI gains the gate. I mean, it's quite impressive. I mean, obviously the AI is having some issues there. But the, yeah, it does seem like... The battle, the CJI in realistic battle mod does do a decent job. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll take three kills. We definitely could have got more, and maybe I should have been a bit more passive. Um, but you know, sometimes you just gotta go for it as best as you can. This was definitely the right side to uh, to pick up, though. Like if I was to come up now, it'd be much easier. But again, I die in like two hits, so that's always a pain. You know, knowing that you're not going to last for much longer. When you take that first hit, it's always a pain in the ass. But now you guys get to see some of the, the more elite soldiers who do have that heavy armor. Really claiming. And I mean, we're on, what, like, six, seven kills? I think, as I said, only 12 more. So, like, one more major battle, and we are sitting pretty. You know, we're already tier three, which is awesome. I believe this is our tier three spearman as well. So they have a good range of, you know, they have a that decent shield. But I can, I can obviously wield with that shield. Very nice helmet. The armor goes up from like a 20 to like a 30 something. They have reinforced gloves, good male boots. So it is a big upgrade. 
There you go. The AI is uh, falling back completely now. We have we pretty much won at this point. They have what eleven soldiers still left remaining. And I think they're just routing men now. Yeah, these are our tier fours as well. You can see them. The tier fours looking very nice. I love the look of these tier fours. There you go. Victory is ours. Managing to defeat the Byzantine Romans. Again, a little bit of renown. Nothing crazy. Um, but again, we can get that renown from just training, which is good. Hey, good hook as well. And we get, gained six charm points of that as well. Another boost in relationship there. He noted me as I was the fall on hope uh, once again. One of, the, uh, one of the downsides to being that fall on hope and actually dying in battles is that you do end up, you know, getting wounded and you're going to spend some money on medicine. Like, that does add up. That's like a monthly wage right there. Um, and we can just train again. But yeah, I think that's where we're going to wrap up today's episode. Oh, there's a 700-man army there. We're going to chase it. Oh, we need to be very careful. Oh, this is going to be exciting. Um, but yeah, that'll be for next episode. This will be for the stream on Saturday. So make sure you tune in 3 p.m. Uh, BST or GMT. I'm not sure what time zone we're in now in the UK. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys tune in. Um, if you can't tune in or you miss it or you're watching this a week or two weeks later... You can always go ahead and just use the playlist down below in the description. You can watch the entire series from start to finish there as they get uploaded. Um, but yeah, we'll be moving on to streams now, which will be really, really fun with a few episodes sprinkled in here and there. So if you did enjoy this, make sure you drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.